Hi, Mike Delicio from Solo Mode Games here. Today, I'm going to do a solo session of the game Sagrada. This is from Floodgate Games and designers Daryl Andrews and Adrian Adamescu. Sagrada is a dice drafting and placement game where you are trying to create the most spectacular stained glass window that you can. You do this by choosing colored dice, rolling them, drafting them, following some placement rules, utilizing some card tools that allow you to manipulate and mitigate some of the dice rolls to try to create the most spectacular stained glass window that you can. This is a game that is very quick to learn. It's easy to teach. It plays very quickly, especially in the solitaire mode. Uh, you can be done in 20 minutes in most cases. And uh, I think you'll get a pretty good idea of how the game plays here in just a moment. So let's go to the table and take a look. Okay, here we have the solo setup for Sagrada, a game where we are trying to create the most spectacular stained glass window. The setup is very simple. We have a round marker here, a round tracker that goes from 1 to 10. We've got five tools that I'll explain in a moment. We've got two what are called public objectives and one what is called a private objective. In the multiplayer game, that private objective would be kept, uh, obviously, private. It would be kept in your uh, hand. But there's uh, no reason to have it uh, private in the solo game. It just stays face up like the public objectives do. And then we've got our frame where we're going to have our dice placement and our actual player board, which is going to slip into that frame uh, in a moment. I want to explain something uh, really quickly beforehand. This is the player board. This is where we're actually going to be placing the dice once they are drafted. Uh, it has a name, which is really just there for flavor. And then you see a number of dots here. In the, uh, the number of dots corresponds to the difficulty. The lower number of dots, the easier it is to place your dice. Now, um, the solo game is quite difficult. I have not uh, won yet. And so I went with the lowest difficulty. In the multiplayer game, those dots not only correspond to difficulty, they correspond to the number of what you'd call favor tokens that you would get. Favor tokens in the multiplayer game are used to purchase, activate use of those tools. In the multiplayer game, or excuse me, in the solo game, there are no favor tokens. So um, you purchase those through drafting dice, and I'll explain that in, in a moment. So let me go ahead and place this in the frame, and then I'll explain how the basic round structure goes. Okay, we're going to have 10 rounds, as I mentioned. Each round, I'm going to draw randomly from the bag four dice. Two of those dice are going to be, hopefully, placed in my window. The other two are going to go one of two places. They're either going to go onto one of these tool cards to pay for its ability, or they're going to go up here on the round marker. At the end of the game, the score that I'm trying to beat is going to be the total number of pips on the dice here. So really, uh, generally speaking, you want to put low value dice up here because you don't want it to add up to a whole lot. To a whole lot. And you also want to use all five of the tools if you can. Not only do they usually help you manipulate the dice and mitigate some uh, bad rolls, but they also are dice that don't get added towards the total that you have to beat. All right? So let me quickly explain the placement rules because then the tools will make a bit more sense. Um, here you can see a couple of different things. You see colored squares and you see numbered squares. All right? The colored squares simply mean that any dice you place there have to be of that color. So these have to be red, they could be any value. These have to be yellow, purple, and blue. These are called shade restrictions and these are numbers. So you have to have a four there, but it can be of any color, two, six, and one, respectively, okay? The first dice that you, or excuse me, the first die you place has to be along an outer edge. Um, then the other placement rules is that dice have to be placed adjacent to each other. So, for example, if I placed my first die here, the next die I place has to be in one of these five spots. It can be diagonal as well as orthogonal, okay? The other restrictions in placing dice 
are that you cannot have two of the same colors next to each other and you can't have two of the same numbers next to each other and that is only orthogonally. So for example, I would not want to place a red two here because if I place a red two here, although it fits the shade restriction, I could not place a die here because you can't have two reds next to each other. Um, I also wouldn't be able to put a two here, here, or here of any color, okay? So those are some uh, basic restrictions that apply. You don't have to worry about it diagonally, but orthogonally, that's uh, something you have to keep in mind. So let's look really quickly at the five tools that I have. You've got, I've got the flux remover. To be able to utilize this tool, I would have to place any purple die. And what this would allow me to do is after drafting, I could return a die to the dice bag, pull another die from the bag, choose a value of any uh, that I like, and place that obeying all the placement restrictions I mentioned, okay? I've got the cork-backed straight edge, which any yellow dice, uh, any yellow die can uh, trigger. After drafting, I place uh, a die in a spot that's not adjacent to another die. So, as I mentioned to you before, the regular rules is that every uh, dice, uh, every die that's placed has to be adjacent to another. This allows you to break that rule. All right. The copper foil burnisher, any color three will allow me access to this which will allow me to move any one die that's already in my window, ignoring shade restrictions. So as you see here, you can move a three into what would normally only be available to a one. I have a lathekin, which is uh, triggered by any color four, where you move exactly two dice that are already in your window, somewhere else in your window. However, they do have to obey placement restrictions. You don't break any rules there. And then finally, I've got the glazing hammer, which can be triggered with any blue die. That allows you to re-roll all dice in the draft pool, but it can only be used on your second turn before drafting. So it's after you've placed your first die in the window, you could trigger this glazing hammer with a blue die, re-roll the last two, and uh, place those. My objectives. Column color variety. Uh, for any columns with no repeated colors, I'll get five points at the end of the game. So potentially I could have 25 points if all five of my columns have no repeating colors. I don't think that's likely, but that's the potential there. Then I've got color variety, which the sets of all five colors, however many of those I have, I get four points each. So these are the five colors that are represented on the dice. Uh, however many of those sets I get will be four each. So if I had uh, two complete sets of the five colors, I'd get eight points, for example, at the end of the game. And then shades of green. This would be normally my private objective. What this means is that for every green die that I place in my window, at the end of the game, I'm going to add up all the number of pips on those dice and add it to my score. So that's where my scoring comes from. My scoring comes from these cards... And uh, I have to also keep in mind that any open die spots on my window are going to count to a negative three. In a multiplayer game, you only lose one point per open spot. In the solo game, any open spot is a minus three. So you really want to try to fill this up completely if you can. So you'll add up the points you gain from your objective cards. You subtract any open spots. And you're going to compare that to the number of dice here on the round tracker. And... That's going to be your win or loss condition. So let's go ahead and go with the first round. I'm going to pull four dice randomly out of the bag. There we go. All right. Well, unfortunately, I got a very low green, which uh, I'm not thrilled about because I'd like a higher one so that I can place it um, on my window and get some points. So, um, hmm, what I could do... Um, I could think about using my glazing hammer with this blue, re-rolling that green uh, to try to get, and then I could also re-roll the six, because potentially if I'm not placing that, it would be going up there. So I think that's what I'm going to think about doing. I'm going to put this on an outer edge. I know I'm going to want to place a green next. So I'll place it, no, I can't place it here because I don't want to cover that. I don't want to block that out. Let's place it here, okay? 
I can put the green here or here. I will put the two on the glazing hammer, all right? Reroll these, I want a low number red and a high number green. I want the exact opposite of what I just saw. And, well, the red didn't work out for me. So I have a decision to make here. Do I want to go ahead and place the red potentially maybe here and then just put the three up there? That's probably what I'm going to do because I don't want those six points working against me. So I gave it a shot. It didn't work out. Uh, I'll place the red there because it's adjacent to that first die. And I'll put the green up here. All right, round two. There we go, four dice. All right. Well, I'd like to place the purple because it's a high value. Wouldn't mind getting this green out there because that would be three points for me. So let's go ahead and place this five here. All right. My adjacency, adjacency rules are fine there. Um, I will place a three here because I know, oops, that is a three. I have to put a two or a four there. And that's going to give five points to my opponent. All right. All right. Let's see here. Well, um, I'd like to place both of these so that I can put the one and the two up there. So why don't I place this three here? Oops, that is a three. I keep moving these. That's a three. Um, I could place this three. I don't want to put it here because I don't want to block myself there. I can place it here. And then I'll place the two and the one up here. So I'm keeping low numbers up there as much as I can. All right. You can see how quickly turns go. All right. Well, I don't want to put that six up there. So I'd like to place the four and the six and put the one and the two up there. And I think I can do that like so. If I put the four here... And if I put the six here, I'm still okay. I don't have any repeat colors in my columns yet, so that's kind of nice too. I'll put the two and the one right up there. Four more. I wish I were getting a few more greens, but that's the breaks. Okay, so I've got two ones, a five, and a four. I obviously want to play my higher numbers if possible. Um, I can play my four here. That fits that shade restriction. And I can place the five here or here, but I don't want to put it here since I already have a purple there. The other thing I could do is place the five here, and that would give me four different color um, dice to give me that five points there. So that's what I'm going to do. Place the five there. I don't believe I've broken any rules here. That two points goes up there. All right. All right, I happen to pull two greens here, so it'd be lovely to get both of those, especially if they're high values. Well, I got a five and a three, that's not bad, but I do have a six that I have to deal with. Okay, so the five I'd love to place there, but I can't. I can play it here though, so I'll put the five here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and place the red six here. Keep it off of the opponent's board. Still keeping different colors. All right, I'll put those six points up there. Not ideal, but, you know, and I haven't been using my tools. That may come back to bite me here at the end of the game. We'll find out. I also need to get some more yellow out here so that I can get the color variety bonus. All right, let's see. Well, I did pull two yellows. All right, a three and a one. Okay, low numbers. That's actually, I'm okay with that. Let's put this yellow three here. Hmm. 
Don't want to put that there. Let me think a moment. Can't put the blue three here. All right, well. Yeah, I could do this. Okay, put the yellow three here. All right, that's that's okay. Making sure I'm gonna hit myself, I'm not messing up. I can put this one, this yellow one here. All right, I'm giving up five points, but I'm really hoping that I'm gonna be able to get, I'm doing really well with these column color varieties yet. I, I we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Okay, some high numbers here, so we need to think about. Okay. Unfortunately, okay, well, I can put this green five here. That still keeps my colors alive and it gets a high number of play. No, I cannot put that green five there. There's a green three right there. Not so fast. Maybe start looking at, um, let's start looking at, so I can place, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna place a gr the, the red three here to use the copper foil burnisher, which allows me, oh, well, do I, that, that tells me I can move. Well, is that really what I wanna do? I can place my green three here, but I lose my bonus there, my color bonus. I can place, the green five here, that may be the way to go for my first one because that still keeps this alive. Doesn't break any rules. Um, I could place my red four here or I could place a green three here. I think I'm gonna do that. I'll place the green three here. I won't get the color bonus on this column. But I think I'm okay otherwise. I play those seven points up there. Ooh, I pulled three purples. Oops, and I dropped one on the floor. So that goes scaring away. Let me... All right. Well, let's see what I got here. Purple two can go right there. It's going to lose that color bonus. Purple two could also go here, but then I'm closing myself out there. And it would also lose me that bonus there. The red six can go here which would give me that five points and keep it off of there. So it seems like a sure play would be to put a, the red six here. Okay, no, I cannot. There's a three, red three right there. You know, you think that would be obvious. You don't, I don't always see it right away. Sometimes it takes me some real, uh, I really have to be very deliberate about where I'm, what I'm placing where. I can put the two here. I could put the two there. I'd lose my color bonus. Um, could also be looking. Okay, so let's do this. Let's use the flux remover. After drafting, return the die to the dice bag. And pull one from the bag. So let's get this red six out of here. Put it in the bag. Pull a new one. I'd love a green die because then I would just place it as a six and put it right there. Hey, what do you know? I got a green die. I promise you that that was legit. I did not look. So that green die goes right there. Okay. Um, and then do I go ahead and just place that purple two there? Or do I place the purple two here and get those five points? Yeah, I think that's what I've got to do. Place the purple two there. Put the purple three there. One more round. All right. Okay, so I, wow, I lucked out. Because I got a yellow two here that I can place right there, which is wonderful. Oops, that was a two. You saw it. <laughs> Camera doesn't lie. All right, so that yellow two, I'm okay here, yes. All right, now here, the red six works. 
and I get that bonus color there too. So that's pretty fantastic. No, it does not work, Mike. You keep trying to you keep trying to ignore that red three. The green would work. The, no, it would not because you got a green five there. So I've got to find a way. Maybe there's something I can do here to place something else. All right. Can't place a four. Can't place a three. I can place a yellow. That doesn't help me. Does not help me. That's going to hurt because I'm going to have to place all of these. No, I can put the yellow, or I can put the red six right there. No, I can't. I can't I keep trying to put, I keep trying to put a red dice there. I die there. All right. Well, that, that last one may have, may have killed me because let's double check. Can't place that there because there's yellows. Can't place this here because there's a, a five. Can't place this because there's a red three. Can't put the yellow here because there's no way to place something that's not adjacent to another die. Don't have a three, don't have a four. So all of these, that's 16 points that I just lost right there. That That's gonna hurt. So let's, let's find out where we're at, okay? Let's find out where we're at. So we're at eight, 10, 11, 14, 16, uh, 19, 22, 27, 37, 47, 38, 49, 50, 52, 53 points. So I've got to beat 53. Uh, probably not likely. But let's see here. I'll put this on 53 just to remind me of what they got. All right, so my points. How many column colors did I get? Well, actually, let's do this. Let's put that 53 right there. All right, my points, I get one column here of different variety, one column here of different variety, one column here. So that's 15 points. All right. Then uh, green, I get 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, 25. 25 and 15 is 40. All right. Uh, now, color variety. Let's see what my sets are here. I've got green, red, blue, yellow, purple. Uh, looks like it's going to be two if I'm lucky because I only had two blues there. Green, red, blue, yellow, and purple. So that's going to give me eight more points. So 48. So, hey, that's that is actually much closer than I've ever come before, 48 to 53. Um, I feel okay about that, especially since if not for that really rough last turn where I had to give them 16 points, I really think I had a chance there. Oh, you know what? Nope. I had a missing, I did have a missing uh, spot on my window. So let me take three points off. So 45, but still I, I can live with 45. Um, that's not too bad uh, as far as I go now, uh, potentially, uh, you can do better, but but uh, for me, I feel pretty good with that. So hopefully you got an idea of how the game is played. It's quick. It's uh, really fast turns and easy to set up and tear down. Uh, so if Sagrada looks like something you might be interested in. You might want to give this a shot. Thank you so much and have a great day.